I'm Professor Brian Miller, a prosthodontist from King's College London, and I'm delighted to be working with Coltine on this project looking at the shapes and sizes of burrs and how they're used for crown preparation. We often start with the depth cutting burr being used to place grooves in the buckle wall to a depth of 0.3 millimetres, in this case with the 828022. This is an optional technique to place the exact marginal depth. Gold margins would be 0.3 millimetres as a chamfer, full zirconia 0.5 millimetres and all ceramic crowns usually 1.2 millimetres. For metal ceramic this would be 0.3 on the lingual aspect and 1.5 millimetres on the buckle. This burr is first used to determine the path of insertion in the long axis and a buckle reference groove is then placed which can be used to reorientate the burr if necessary during the tooth preparation. The same burr is then used to carry out the reduction on the buckle aspect of the tooth. This optional step using the 392021 is for the initial proximal reduction. It is a much thinner burr than the 850014 and so reduces the risk of damage to the adjacent tooth. The proximal reduction is deepened with the 850014 to provide a continuous margin all around the tooth to connect buccal, mesial, lingual and distal surface reductions. Particular care is taken at the distal lingual junction where undercuts often occur. This longer burr, the 850018, may be required for some teeth, particularly upper anterior teeth. The use of a round-ended chamfering burr can leave a rim of enamel on the edge of the preparation. This fragile enamel rim would be recorded by the impression material but likely not be reproduced by the die stone or would easily fracture off the die. It is also doubtful if a digital scanner could actually record it. The crown would then be fabricated to the wrong marginal line, the fractured edge and not to the tip of the enamel rim and so would not fit the tooth exactly. The crown would not seat onto the tooth around the entire margin, resulting in aesthetic problems and a risk of leakage. The solution to this problem is to finish the margin with an end cutting burr, such as an 839014. Removal of the sharp edge is not easy with a crown preparation burr, particularly as these long burrs in dental turbines tend to whip around the long axis. It is, however, easy with an end cutting burr. The occlusal reduction is then carried out. First depth cuts are placed either with the crown preparation burr, the 850014, or a depth cutting burr to establish the desired reduction. Then the reduction is carried out, maintaining cuspal contour. The occlusal contour should replicate the desired occlusal scheme, aiming for cusp angles slightly less than the contour track angle of 30 degrees. Gold requires 1mm and ideally 1.5mm in the functional areas. Full zirconia requires 1mm, while all ceramic and metal ceramic crowns would require 2mm. The occlusal reduction can easily be carried out with a 379023 burr. However, this burr tends to round off the detail and reduce the occlusal contour. Once the occlusal reduction is complete, the bevels are then placed. These form the junction between occlusal and axial walls. The functional bevel, which is buckle on this lower molar tooth, is placed with the 850014, reducing a further 0.5mm from the cusp height and blending the occlusal and buckle surfaces together. On the mesial, lingual and distal surfaces, the bevel is much smaller. This non-functional bevel is simply a rounding of the edge at 45 degrees.
Now we finish the buckle curvature with the 850014 to blend the functional bevel with the buckle wall. A putty index should be used to confirm this contour. Frequently, not enough tooth tissue is removed at this point, resulting in an over-contoured crown, which will alter the working side occlusal contacts. The tooth preparation is then finished with a burr such as an 860014, and it is particularly important to create smooth surfaces when restorations are to be milled with burrs. Here we are cutting the buckle chamfer with an 850014 for a cast 3 quarter gold restoration at a depth of 0.3 mm. It is also used for the gold overlay, onlay and cusp covered inlay. It is suitable for zirconia if cut to 0.5 mm and can be used for indirect composite and ceramic overlays if cut to an increased depth. Longitudinal grooves are often used to increase retention and resistance to debonding. Here we are cutting the longitudinal grooves with an 850014 for a cast gold three quarter crown. Well, thank you for watching the content and I hope you found it useful to carrying out tooth preparation with a range of dental burrs. For further information, you may want to look at the coalteen.com website or for educational content, then why not have a look at our King's College London educational website, distancedentistry.kcl.ac.uk. Thank you. Colteen.com